of America, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I do. Roll call has been completed. Let's move on to adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded by Mr. O'Connell for the adoption of the agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of February 9th and March 1st, 2021 council minutes. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Lori Dean. Okay. Any further discussion or corrections? Uh, let's see here. Any, no, no additions or corrections to that? All right. Uh, please cast your ballots. Gotta take it off discussion. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Motion carry 10 0. Approve to pay the bills, Mr. Morak. Thank you, Your Honor. Move pay bills in the amount of $558,952.35. Second. Oh. Motion has been made and seconded by Mr. Herter to pay the bills in the amount of $558,952.35. Any additions or corrections? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10 0. All right, being 703, we'll move into the public hearing to designate zoning as R1 for newly annexed property at 1715 and 1711 Mill Street. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Move on to public input. Tim? Hi. Um, <clears throat> My name is Tim Roberts. I uh, know I'm kind of new to these meetings, but I've been hanging around for a while, going to a lot of different meetings, and I just had some comments I'd like to uh, say about tonight's meeting. Tonight uh, on the agenda, you'll be uh, voting to finance the Newton Blackmore Trail. I believe this is a huge mistake. Um, I'd like you to reconsider spending the $154,310. Um, it's not that I have anything against the trail. I think that would be great, but I just think that uh, the money could be spent better on the community. I understand that there are over $800,000 in grants, but that's like going to Kohl's and spending $100 and they tell you you saved $170. At the end of the day, you still spent $100. Not to mention the Ayers Association can't even guarantee the trail since the highway department, according to the meeting uh, the other day, said that they needed to protect the center supports on the US 45 bridge and that decision won't be made until 2025. Well, once this is done you still need to make a bridge over the embarrassed river from the dog park to connect with downtown. It's throwing away money for years on designing it and I don't think the trail will ever be built. Biggest complaint I hear in the city is the wheel tax. This year the wheel tax is expected to raise $127,000. We're talking about spending $154,000. Um, I can't believe we'd be willing to um, throw money at ridiculous projects when hardworking people in the community are contributing to wheel tax. Like I said, I think the money should be spent wiser. Um, I, see, I saw in the budget committee that we were already spending money with uh, the Ayers Association. I don't know, it was like $12,000 I was in the back. I was trying to read, but um, I don't know if uh, we could cut ties with them already. I don't know how much money has been spent already designing and uh, paying them. I think that it's just uh, money going down the drain. I realize this is a passion for a lot of people and I uh, think that if it is a passion, uh, maybe ask a biking a club to have a fundraiser, raise the money themselves. I don't think we should put it on the backs of the taxpayers. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Tim. Any other public input? Hearing none, we'll move on. 
Next on the agenda is standing and special committees. We'll start off with the Board of Public Works. Mr. Barrington. Thank you. Board of Public Works met on Monday, March 1st, 2021 at 4.30. Uh, wastewater treatment plan update. There were no questions or concerns on the wastewater treatment plan monthly reports. The next was to review information from Outagamie County regarding ATV routes on county highways. The city has been notified by Outagamie County of a newly created ordinance which will allow ATV UTVs on county highways to allow access on county highways within the city limits a permit from the county would need to be approved some of the requirements of the permit appear to be holding a local public hearing notifying all property owners along that route of the public hearing and paying a permit fee for designating ATV UTV access. Mr. Hearth will attend the Outagamie County webinar on this subject and bring the information on this process to future meetings. No motion was made at this time. <clears throat> the next thing we discussed and considered options for residential solid waste collection <coughs> within the city limits. The mayor and Ted <coughs> had a discussion regarding junk complaints received throughout the city and how to dis focus on cleaning <coughs> up the community. The city does not have a citywide contract and allows property owners the choice of how to dispose of their waste. Some property owners do not pay for solid waste pickup and pile of junk in their yards or illegally dispose of garbage in commercial or park dumpsters. The board discussed whether it would reduce these issues and be cheaper for residents if New London had a citywide contract to provide service to all single and two family residential properties. The board will continue discussions at a future meeting. No motion was made at this time. The next was to consider a proposal to modify the right of way at the corner of Pearl and Wapaka Street. The city is working with Thrident Financial on a request to replace their business sign. The existing sign is in the right of way, which is a violation of the city's municipal code. To assist with their plans, since the right of way is wide in that area, the Planning Commission suggested modifying the right of way line to the standard 60 foot width and allow more room for the business sign. Motion made and seconded. The council allows a modification right of way to establish a 60 foot right of way width and deeding the remaining property to the adjacent property owner. Motion carried by all. That will be brought to the council tonight. <clears throat> Next, present the department's 2019-2020 annual report. Due to COVID-19, the development of the 2019 annual report was put on hold. This year's report was a combination report for 2019-2020. The next was the director's report. The director's memo was included and reviewed by the committee. Service anniversary report. Mark, Mark Oz, street operator, completed 22 years of service as of February 1st. Future agenda items. Review options and an agreement for brush disposal. Discuss options for residential solid waste collection. No further business. Meeting was adjourned at 5.07. To bring to council tonight, adopt an ordinance regarding mercury discharge into the sanitary sewer system. This is a second reading. I make a motion we adopt that ordinance. Second. Uh, motion been made and seconded by Mr. Dorsey to adopt the ordinance regulating mercury discharge into the sanitary sewer system. Second reading. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Mr. 
Mr. Pinch. She's acting up again. Motion carried 10 0. I make a motion to approve modifying the right of way line at 101 West Wapaka Street to establish a 60 foot right of way width. Indeed, the remaining property to the adjacent property owner. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Mr. Zog to approve modifying the right of way line at 101 West Wapaka Street to establish a standard 60 foot right of way with and deed the remaining property to the adjacent property owner. Any further discussion? Is that going to require any construction or anything? Like no construction. No, okay. Any further questions? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10 0. The next item I see is to waive rules to adopt ATV UTV routes ordinance amendment in one reading. We've changed that as of the meeting tonight. That's including that. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. You're waiving the rules that read it to approve it in one reading right. instead of going two months in a row. Okay. Right. So that's an, it one reading. That's an right. addition and to the meeting we had. So then I make a motion to adopt an ordinance amending ATV, UTV routes within the city of New London. Second. You're just doing the one reading right now to approve it in one reading. You're, you're going to then adopt the ordinance next. Okay. Right. Second. So motions been made and seconded to waive the rules and adopt ATV UTV routes ordinance amendment in one reading. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10 0. Okay, then we'll make a motion to adopt an ordinance amending ATV UTV routes within the city of New London. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Mrs. Dean. To adopt an ordinance amending ATV UTV routes within the city of New London. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballot. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Darn it. It's all good. <coughs> God. Fred? Fred? This one got messed up good. Motion carried 10 0. And that is all I have tonight, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Barrington. Moving on to finance and personnel, Mr. Mora. Thank you, Your Honor. Finance and personnel committee met on Wednesday, March 3rd at 4.30 p.m. the council chambers and via Zoom. Finance director Ratke presented a tax rate comparison of communities around the New London area and then a couple of communities in close proximity and of similar size. The city of New London has a very attractive tax rate in terms of being lower than or compared to, to other jurisdictions. This can make the city attractive for residential, commercial, and business development. Finance Director Ratke reviewed the monthly financial reports. Finance Director's reports was discussed. Alderman Dorsey requested information be presented on the tax rate comparison and wheel tax report be available on the city website and our Facebook page for public view. Finance Director Ackie said she would get the information to the IT department for that request. At this time, the citizens of New London can view both of these reports on the city's webpage. There being no public comment or further business, the meeting adjourned at 4.59 p.m. The next regularly scheduled finance meeting will be held in the council chambers on April 7th at 4.30 p.m. Then I move we approve an ordinance to amend ordinance number 1383 mm -hmm. to correct ward designations for the Schultz property at 715, 1715 and 1711 Mill Street. This Fire. is the second read, uh, reading. Motion been made and seconded by Mr. Zog to approve an ordinance to amend ordinance number 1383 to correct ward designation for the Schultz property at 1715 and 1711 Mill Street. Second reading. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10-0. And then I move we 
approve the license list for March as presented. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Mr. Barrington to approve the license list as presented. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10-0. And that's all I have for finance, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Morrock. Continuing on to park and recreation, Mr. Besaw. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Park and Rec Committee met on Tuesday, March 2nd. Meeting was called to order at 445. Public comment relevant to items on the agenda. There was none presented. At this point, the Cemetery Commission came into session for a joint commission committee meeting. Joint meeting with the Cemetery Commission to discuss use and access options for the 10 acre parcel on the south side of the Floor Hill Cemetery. At last month's meeting, the Park and Rec Committee discussed the vacant land south of the Floor Hill Cemetery for a bike trail use. The purpose of this joint session was to gain input from both the Commission and the Committee on the topic. Shaw stated at this time, the Commission was talking about the concept a little bit with some general questions and concerns, but haven't really put the necessary time to investigate all concerns or possibilities. Jay Bassett provided concerns for the utility perspective with a city water tower in proximity of the property, and if that would encourage people to trespass around utility facilities. Concerns of trespassing in the adjacent quarry and increased traffic to the cemetery were also discussed. Rob Way stated that he spoke with Outagamie County Parks Director and found that the county is working on updating their future comp plans and have an online survey available to provide input for the development of future county facilities. He suggested to those in attendance to fill out the survey to provide input to the county on potential future improvements, including those for bike facilities. Discussions on this topic will continue in the future with a possible tour of the property. No motion was made at this time. At this time, the cemetery committee adjourned, commission adjourned. Discuss and possible action on a special events mass gathering restrictions on city property. With COVID-19 vaccines being administered and the positive test cases in the state declining, Chad Hurth suggested it was time to begin discussions and be ready to ease up restrictions for special events if and when the appropriate time be begins. Dorsey discussed making a decision now as clubs are currently in the planning stages for summer events and need to know what they can offer. Dorsey also commented that he attends tournaments at last summer with no known COVID transmission from those outdoor events. Shea and Dorsey moved to direct staff to update the COVID mass gathering plan and remove the attendance restriction number for outdoor special events to be reviewed at next month's meeting. The motion was carried by all. Consider for action on an agreement with the Fox Communities Credit Union for sponsorship communities opportunities for Memorial Park scoreboards. Chad Hart presented a sponsorship agreement with Fox Communities Credit Union for signage at Memorial Park. The five-year sponsorship calls for a one-time payment of $7,500 in return for sponsorship signs to be installed above both scoreboards at Memorial Park. Dean and Fouché moved to recommend that council consider the five-year sponsorship agreement with Sox Communities Credit Union. Motion was carried by all. Authorize staff to execute an agreement with Wapaka County Health Department for use of the Washington Center Senior Center for the Wapaka County Nutrition Program. The committee reviewed a draft agreement allowing Wapaka County Health Department to utilize the Senior Center at the Washington Center for the Community or County Nutrition Program. The agreement is the same and has no changes from previous years. Mache and Dean moved to authorize staff to execute an agreement with Wapaka County Health Department for the use of the Washington Se Center Senior Center for the Wapaka County Nutrition Program. The motion was carried by all. Present the, the Department 2019-2020 Annual Report. Due to COVID-19, the development of the 2019 Annual Report was put on hold. This year's report was a combination report of 2019 and 2020. No motion was made at this time. 
consider for approval an agreement with Aries Associates Incorporated for final design, bidding, and construction services for development of the Newton Blackmore Trail. An agreement with Aries Associates was reviewed to hire the firm for the next phase of the Newton Blackmore Trail development. Aries was previously hired to create 60% design documents for the trail and apply for a community development block grant. Greg Shu from Aries Associates provided background information on the project thus far. Moshe Dean moved to approve an agreement with Aries Associates Incorporated for final design, bidding, and construction services in the amount of $154,310 for further development of the Newton Blackmore Trail. The motion was carried by all. Director's report and memo. Director's memo was included in the agenda packet and reviewed by the committee. Committee members report there is none presented. Future agenda items, replacement of the Riverside boat launch docks and kayak launches. Review mass gathering restrictions on city property. Potential bike trails behind Floral Hill Cemetery. Meeting was moved to adjourn at 610. Motion was carried by all. I would look for approval for a five-year sponsorship agreement with Fox Communities Credit Union for signage at Memorial Park. Second. Motion been made and second by Ms. Dean to approve a five-year sponsorship agreement with Fox Communities Credit Union for signage at Memorial Park. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10-0. And I would also look for authorization to authorize the execution of an agreement with Opaca County Health Department for the use of the Washington Center Senior Center for the Opaca County Nutrition Program. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Mr. Zog to authorize the execution of an agreement with Opaca County Health Department for the use of the Washington Center Senior Center for the Opaca County Nutrition Program. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried 10 0. Now we look for approval of an agreement with Aries Associates Incorporated for the final design, bidding, and construction service in the amount of $154,310 for further development of the Newton Blackmore Trail. Second. Motion be made. Who seconded that? By Mr. Fache. To approve an agreement with Aries Associates for the final design, bidding, and construction service in the amount of $154,310 for the further development of the Newton Blackmore Trail. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. Motion carried. 8-2. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Besaw. Move on to the Planning Commission. Mr. Besaw, you're up again. Hey. The February Planning Commission met on Thursday, February 25th. Meeting was called to order at 5 o'clock. Those in attendance were Chairman Besaw, Bessett, Steingraber, Walbrook, Knoll, and Mayor Herter. Others in attendance were City Administrator Chad Hurth, Dave Dorsey, Kenneth Benzler, John Walbrook, Sutart, Trader, Sarah Wiley, Zoom via Zoom, Habitat for Humanity, and Paul Gauther via Zoom, Midwest Properties LLP Building Inspector and Zoning Administrator David Vinson via Zoom. Motion by Noel, second by Steingraber to adopt the agenda. Motion was carried by all. Motion by Herder to second by Walbrook to approve the January 28, 2020 meeting minutes as presented. Motion was carried by all. Sarah Wiley presented a presentation for the incoming Habitat for Humanity Rock the Block event scheduled for this fall. This event brings communities together to improve homes and beautify surrounding neighborhoods by assisting low to moderate income qualified property owners with exterior repairs, exterior repairs to their home. The success of the event is dependent on the volunteers, fundraising, and other collaborative efforts within the community network. Projects may include siding, windows, a roofing replacement, general landscaping cleaning. The group is focusing outreach efforts in the fifth ward for the program. However, all houses within the city limits are eligible for the improvements. Applications and contract improvement information 
can be found in the lobby at the New London Municipal Building. In conjunction with Rock the Block event, Habitat for Humanity is requesting that the city waive all building permit fees for the project. The commission required how much, inquired how much revenue the city may lose by waiving the fees. Chad Hart reported that it's unknown at this time how many homes and what the extent of the repairs may be for the event, so it's hard to determine the amount of fees that may be waived. The thought is that many of these repairs may not happen if the event doesn't occur, so a portion of the waived fees that the city would not likely see anyway if the event was not held. Motion by Herder, second by Walbrook, to waive the building permit fees for those participating in the Habitat for Humanity Rock the Block event. Motion was carried by all. A preliminary certified survey map was presented for dividing prop parcels in the Northeast Business Park on Frederick Farm Lane. The purpose of the division was to assist the city in selling a parcel defined as Lot 2 on the CSM to Midwest Properties LLP for future commercial development. Motion by Herder, second by Bessett to approve the preliminary CSM east of Frederick's Farm Lane as presented. Motion was carried by all. A site plan was presented for the construction of manufacturing facilities on the site the city will be selling to Midwest Properties LLP. Contract building inspector Randy Backus confirmed that the information provided appears to be in compliance with the requirements for the zoning code. Motion by Mole, second by Steingraber to approve the site plan for a manufacturing facility by Midwest Properties, LLP on Frederick Farm Lane. Motion was carried by all. The commission reviewed a preliminary CSM to provide four parcels at 401, 405, 411, and 413 South Pearl Street into one parcel. The parcels are owned by the city and the library and museum board and the purpose of combining the parcels is to assist with the development of the library's plan for facility expansion across the street from the existing library. Chad Harth informed the commission that in the future, the Finance Committee and City Council will review the proposal to deed the property at 401 South Pearl to the library and museum board. Chad Harth suggested providing preliminary approval of the CSM pending the City Council's approval of deeding a single lot to the library and museum board. Motion by Herder, second by Walbrook to approve the presented to CSM to combine four parcels into one on the 400 block of South Pearl Street, pending the city council's approval of deeding the lot at 401 South Pearl Street to the library and museum board. The commission considered a variance request to reduce the required 15 foot flood protection elevation distance at 312 Elm Street. The property owner is raising up the property and building a new home on the site. However, the parcel is not wide enough for the required 15-foot flood protection zone around the building. The owner provided stamped engineering drawings showing the new grades and support structures for a retaining wall around the new home. Contracted building inspector Randy Backus reviewed the drawings and felt the submitted engineering plans were sufficient showing the required material for fill and structural design of the retaining wall. Motion by Herder, second by Bassett to approve the variance request to reduce the required 15 foot flood protection elevation distance around a new residential building at 312 Elm Street. Motion was carried by all. Motion by Herder, second by Bassett to approve the variance. Oops, I just read that. Mm -hmm. Hearth provided an update of a CSM being created to modify the right of way at 101 Wapaka Street to assist Thrivent Finance with the replacement of a business sign. A review of future agenda items are discussed. The next planning commission meeting is tentative being scheduled for Wednesday, March 24th to accommodate the scheduling conflict with the consulting that will be attending the next meeting. Motion to adjourn by Walbrook, second by Bassett. Meeting adjourned at 548. I would look for the councils approve a zoning ordinance designing the property at 1715 and 1711 Mill Street as R1 single family residence. This is a second reading. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Mr. Zog to approve a zoning ordinance designating the property at 1715 and 1711 Mill Street as R1 single family residential. Second reading. Any further discussion? Please cast your ballots. 
Motion carried by all. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Besaw. Uh, next on the agenda is economic development. Mr. Morak. Thank you, Your Honor. The Economic Development Committee met on Tuesday, February 23rd at 4.30 p.m. In the, in the New London City Council Chambers and via Zoom. The January 26 minutes were approved. Scott Black and Terry Wagner from the New London School District provided a presentation consisting of updates to school facilities financed from the latest school referendum. Improvements included the HVAC, boiler, lighting, roofing, technology, security, restroom updates, flooring, track resurfacing, and asphalt repairs at various buildings. An additional classroom was also added to the Parkview Elementary School. Future construction improvements are in the works for several buildings for the summer of 2022. Additional information was presented on how the school has worked through the challenges regarding the COVID pandemic. Several committee and student members provided input and suggestions for school district programming and communication. Hearth and Semple led a discussion and provided ideas of how the city could use marketing funds for promoting videos of New London on social media. Several different potential marketing categories were discussed for tourism, city services, quality of life, and business development. Depending on what categories are being marketed, staff can define different geographical locations and demographics to designate where advertising dollars would be spent. The draft social media marketing plan is a work in progress and will be discussed further at future meetings. Kapitsky provided a local business update report. Kapitsky handed out the latest copy of the New London Area Chamber of Commerce Directory and Tourism Guide. New commercial owners have purchased the property at 504 West North Water Street, formerly leased by Wolf River Lawyers. The owners plan on having the office fully furnished and available to lease soon. Walmart is looking at some remodeling to take place in June. This will consist of rearranging and updating some areas of the current floor plan. It is anticipated to be a nine-week project with a grand opening in late July. A new business called Alicia <coughs> Land Lays Sol uh, Salon is opening at 1721 Hillshire Drive on March 1st. The next level, USC Ultimate Sports Complex, located at 865 Surprise Ending Road, formerly Elevate Archery, is now open for business. The property at 309 South Pearl Street, formerly known as The Barn, is under new ownership and now will be called the Cruise Inn and will have a soft, a soft opening in March. Kapitsky also commented that when the downtown revitalization group start focusing efforts for revitalization several years, several years ago, there were nine open commercial vacancies on North Water Street. Today, there are only two. Administrator Hearth reported on efforts working with Midwest Properties for their development in the Northeast Industrial Park, as well as working with SC Sordisky for the downtown riverfront development. The committee reviewed speakers and agenda items for future meetings. There was no public comment. The next committee meeting will be scheduled for Tuesday, March 30th at 4.30 p.m. And the meeting adjourned at 6.15 p.m. Then you also have copies of the Wapaka County Economic Development Corporation monthly report for February 2021. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Morak. Move on to minutes and reports, then we'll stand as read in your packets. Furthering on to reports of officers and recent events and announcements to the public. Start off with the mayor's appointment. <clears throat> like to appoint a Virginia, reappoint Virginia Slice and also appoint Carrie LeBaire to the Library and Museum Board. We get a motion. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded by Ms. Dean. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I'd also like to highlight the fact that uh, Missy has created a, a forum for committees and commissions that is now on our website. 
If you are interested in filling out the form and getting involved, please fill it out and that gets directly submitted to myself um, and that will help further appointments of different committee members. Also, we have a hard copy in the um, City Hall office or the, the, the um, lobby. So that's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Move on to utility manager, Mr. Bessett. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, electric crews are continuing to trim trees around our power lines. The water department had a main break on Pine Street affecting the middle school on February 14th. Our water crews made that repair on the 15th. We had a second main break in front of Bucky's restaurant that same day. We also made that repair on the 15th as well. The utilities had their first frozen service on the 17th of February, 600 East Pine Street. Water crews tried to jet that service that evening with no luck. Electric crews used the electric thaw machine and returned service to that customer around 9.30 on the 18th. Water customers were put on the winter run list. They were notified the, on February 17th to turn their water on. This list is determined by the utilities and I'd like to remind customers they will not be reimbursed for water runs not previously approved by the utilities. We had an accident on February 19th at noon. A vehicle struck a traffic signal at Pearl and North Water Street. Electric crews repaired the signal and reinstalled it on the 22nd. We also had a main break on the 22nd at 1609 Jefferson Street. That repair was made on the 23rd. I also want to thank the street crews for their assistance with their vacuum truck on that job. Uh, Steel King had reported a problem with a breaker in their building. Crews scheduled an outage on March 6th and we made those repairs. On February or March 8th, electric crews repaired some wet out aluminum wire that crews found bad while trimming behind 1006 West Pine Street. A municipal well will be coming this week to start the three weeks of work to well number five and I have on the next commission agenda to discuss the recycling event at the utility. Uh, we have a pretty strong following for that event so we need to see if we can accommodate our customers this year with COVID or not. Uh, the office also fired the filed the required paperwork with the PSC to be able to disconnect our customers due to non-payment. Uh, if the PSC would allow us to do that we'll begin that in April. And that's all I have your honor. Thank you Mr. Bassett. Moving on to Chief of Police, Mr. Schleter. Thank you your honor. Uh, we had two anniversaries, Mike Harlow 15 years and Chase Schrader 10 years. Uh, the police department right now we're in the process of hiring two new officers uh, one new officer we hope to give a final offer to coming up here maybe in the next week or so and hopefully get started in the second one uh, real soon here with the background checks and everything uh, we are filling for a current vacancy that we have and then we're anticipating a retirement coming up in june so as soon as that's official i'll announce that probably at the next meeting but uh you'll probably see a couple new faces on the force here soon thank you Thank you, Mr. Schleter. Move on to Director of Public Services and City Administrator, Mr. Hearth. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, starting next week on Monday, um, help our Parks and Rec Department find one of New Dublin's lep Leprechaun's Lucky Charms um, that have been lost somewhere in one of our city parks. Follow our Facebook page to receive daily clues to help find that lucky medallion. Winners will receive, receive a basket full of New Dublin goodies and maybe even some good, some good luck with that. Limerick Clues will be posted on the Parks and Rec Facebook page daily at 9 a.m. So if you're interested in that uh, event, check out our Facebook page there. Um, on the street side, we had a bid opening today for the Warner Allen Street Reconstruction Project. Bids came in very favorable with that. I'm very excited um, on how they turned out. So things are definitely on track for that project. Uh, for the council's information, we'll be bringing the bid tab for that back at the April meetings. So we'll bring that, uh, the bid results to the April meetings. Um, we also have those uh, resolutions and uh, public hearing for the sanitary, sa sanitary sewer lateral assessments that we'll be working on. Um, but for the general public, once we have more information on the timing of everything from the contractor, we will be posting that on the city's website. So if you go to the Public Works page and then there's a Projects tab, that once we have that information, we'll put all that information on there with schedules and uh, the project status and things like that. So you know, check out that page once we get the project going. And then last but not least, uh, uh, we're ready for we're getting ready for spring brush and leaf pickup um, we've got that scheduled right now for april 26th through may 14th again if you're interested in uh, 
more information on that uh, service, go to the city's website. It kind of talks about how to put the brush perpendicular from the curb and definitely the compost in the street but in the curb line so we can pick it up with our tin claws. But again, April 26th and May 14th uh, is scheduled right now for that leaf and brush pickup for the spring. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hearth. Next up is uh, the fire chief, Mr. Wolfer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to uh, let everyone know, the UTV that the fire department uh, spent about six years raising funds for will be delivered either at the end of this week or first part of next week, along with the, uh, the uh, wildland uh, fire capabilities and rescue capabilities that that unit will allow us. So just want to let everyone know that's coming. Uh, also, I have some service anniversaries. Uh, Mark Wilfer, 37 years. Mark Hunchke, 37 years. Nick Wickman, nine years. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilfer. No further ado, we're looking for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion been made by Ms. Dean, second by Mr. Barrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carried.